Lawyers for seniors urge guardianship reform. Lawmakers step into the anti-psychotic drug battle. And researchers are testing a hearing aid that can also read minds. This and more, next. You're watching LTC News with Dane Henning. Welcome to CNA TV Long-Term Care News. I'm Dane Henning. Today is Wednesday, May 22nd, 2019. To stay in the know of long-term care news, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. A group of legal advocates for seniors is calling for major changes to guardianship laws following an investigative report that found extensive flaws in the way one state handles its background checks and appointments, leaving many nursing home residents, among others, vulnerable to exploitation. Guardians are commonly used to manage the affairs of incapacitated individuals, including many seniors. One study found that, one, that more than 12% of guardianship requests come from nursing homes caring for the elderly. In Pennsylvania, where a single guardian serving more than 100 seniors was recently charged with multiple felonies related to stealing from them, the state does not provide an attorney to help ferry those in need through the guardian selection process. Many advocates are suggesting free counsel, and some are saying the state's General Assembly should require professional guardians serving three or more clients to obtain certification, pass a criminal background check, and comply with professional and ethical standards. The legislature has failed to act on bills introduced in the last two years. One guardian was removed from dozens of cases after failing to account for $127,607 belonging to a client. The woman died in a suburban Philadelphia nursing home in February, but her estate still remains in limbo. Oklahoma providers, the most likely in the nation to use antipsychotic drugs on nursing home residents, have a new incentive to limit prescribing. Republican Oklahoma Governor Kevin Stitt last week signed a law that requires a medical exam, diagnosis, and informed consent from the resident or caregiver before prescription can be written. Residents also will be allowed to refuse medications without threat of eviction. Representative Tammy West, the Republican from Oklahoma City, said she co-authored the bill in part because of a Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services finding that 20% of the state's nursing home residents take an antipsychotic drug. CMS has cracked down on overprescribing of such medications, which in the past were often given to modify sleep, agitation, or other behaviors frequently associated with dementia. In 2017, the federal agency introduced new regulations that limit which conditions antipsychotic drugs can be used for and how, that, how long they can be prescribed using nonspecific as-needed scripts. Oklahoma still ranks first in the nation for their use. Care Providers Oklahoma, the local AHCA affiliate, said its providers are were already working on drug-reducing initiatives with or without this legislation. The bill was backed by AARP, whose Oklahoma director has called the use of chemical restraint immoral. We'll be back right after this break. CNA TV. CNA TV. Memberships have changed over the years. This has been your long-term care news update. I'm Lisa Sweet, co-founder of NACA. CNA TV. <laughs> Don't miss out on any of the great programming on CNA TV. Subscribe today. A group of scientists hopes to make hearing aids more effective by giving them the power to read minds. A team of researchers from Columbia University and Hofstra Northwell School of Medicine unveiled their experimental design and science advances earlier this week. The next generation hearing aid uses artificial intelligence to separate the sounds of various speakers, interprets brain activity to determine which person the wearer actually wants to hear, and then turns up that voice and only that voice. For now, the device interacts with surgically implanted electrodes in the brain's surface, but one day it might use electrodes placed on the scalp or behind the ear to connect the deep neural networks. Remote devices such as mobile phones also could help the process and compilations needed to power the solution. The team predicted that such a device can help hearing-impaired listeners more easily communicate in crowded environments 
and reduce the listening effort for normal hearing subjects, therefore reducing listening fatigue. This has been your long-term care news update. Everyone have a wonderful week, and I'll see you on Wednesday.